Yeah, hello, I'm Retro Jules. A big hello to those who know me from when I used to make World of Tanks videos, and a big hello to you watching this video. Please don't worry about subscribing to the channel, as this is just a one-off video to share some information about mounting honeycomb controls to a wheel stand and some general info about my experience. But if you want to give the video a like at the end, then that will be just fine. The reason I've made this video is because a lot of the information does not seem to be readily available on YouTube and I'm hoping it may help you or give you some ideas about mounting honeycomb products. The situation I found myself in is I am lucky enough to have a dedicated space for driving. I built a sim rig dedicated to playing SnowRunner on Xbox but wanted to adapt it in such a way that I could relatively easily swap between driving and my brand new hobby, Microsoft Flight Simming. I wanted to do it in such a way that I didn't have to disassemble everything every time I wanted to change game. So my solution was one chair, but two wheel stands, where everything stays mounted and I just swap stands over as and when the needs be. My system may not work for you, but if you've been wondering whether mounting honeycomb products to a steering wheel stand is possible and viable, then I can quite simply say, yes it is. And this video may help you design your own way of creating a flight sim setup. My setup consists of a next level GT Ultimate V2 racing seat, which I do believe is discontinued now. I paired this with a GT Omega Apex wheel stand for driving and simply zip tied the two together, which worked perfectly. I then purchased a next level racing wheel stand with, and this is the important bit, a next level shelf. I also have a freestanding TV stand and a racing carpet to mount it all on. And again, I will zip tie the chair to the stand and whenever I wish to go back from flying to driving, I will snip the zip ties and do the swap. I have removed the base plates from the wheel stand as they are angled and will not be suitable for the future Charlie pedals. This does not affect the rigidity of the stand at all. I should then be able to sit the Charlie pedals quite happily underneath using carpet spikes. I have used the clamps to mount the Alpha XPC and Bravo throttle. And an important note here, each mounting plate, as well as a sticky pad, also has four countersunk holes in the corners. So you could screw the plates down onto a surface and not use the clamps if you should so wish. I did need to fit wooden battens underneath the metal shelf as it was just a smidge too thin for the clamps to grip fully. I can happily say that the Alpha XPC and Bravo throttle fit perfectly side by side with a space to one side for your coffee, controller and flight notes. There is a little flex front to back on the shelf as you move the yoke to pitch. This is something I may address if it becomes annoying during play as I have not tested this setup yet as I am brand new to Flight Sim on Xbox Series X and I'm really excited about getting started. Who knew peripherals like this would be made available to us lowly console peasants? Now hang on Retro, I hear you cry. How are you going to fly without rudder controls? Well I've waited long enough for the Alpha to be delivered and seeing as the Charlies aren't available until March 2023 at the earliest, I wanted to get to grips with flying a plane and play with my new toys. So the plan is to stick with single prop GA planes and hopefully use the spare Bravo axes for rudder and tow brakes, or maybe utilise auto rudder in the sim, or reassign some buttons to get me going. If you guys know a workaround that works well, then please do let me know. The main reason I've gone about setting this up is because I do not have a desk available and I do not wish to play flight sim with smallish monitors. I want to utilise the chair I already have, the 48 inch LG C1 I already have, and have a simple swap out plug and play system utilising a dedicated gaming area in my office. Or is it a game room that I also use in an office? Who cares? It does both. I hope this video has helped you decide how you may or may not want to set up a flight sim and more importantly show you the possibility of mounting honeycomb peripherals to a wheel stand and not have to fork out 700 quid for a dedicated flight rig. 
I am super happy the way this has come together and should I experience any niggles and issues I will post them down below along with any solutions that I have made. This system of course utilizes the Xbox Hub which is vital for using the existing Bravo Throttle Quadrant and future Charlie Rudder pedals with Xbox Series S and X. Now the instructions also state that the Xbox Hub is compatible with Logitech throttles and pedals. I contacted Cytec to verify this and they could not. They said that their products were not compatible with Xbox. I then contacted Honeycomb about the issue and their response was to contact Cytec. I recontacted Cytec about compatibility and their further response was and I quote, we cannot comment on future products, unquote. So as of posting this video, neither Honeycomb or Cytec seem to know their ass from their elbows and cannot help. This does not bode well if manufacturers claim their products are compatible via instruction manuals, but cannot confirm when questioned. Oh, the joys of gaming in the year of 2022. Please let me know if this video was useful to you in any way and if you have any suggestions or questions for myself or to help other flight simmers or would-be flight simmers who are thinking of taking to the skies, then please let them know down below. This is Retro Jewels. Thank you for being here. Roger and out.